Want to learn about stocks, cryptocurrencies, NFTs, and the metaverse? Join richtv.io. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm your host, Rich. Here we have Rich TV Live with our very special guest, CEO of Flying Nickel Mining, John Lee. How are you doing today, John? Doing fine. Good afternoon, Rich. Good afternoon. Great to see you again. John, can you tell us how you got involved with Flying Nickel Mining and why you believe it's one of the premium nickel PGM platinum group metal plays in Canada? Right, Rich. I have been around the mining industry for 20, 22 years. And before that, I was in Silicon Valley. And I spent first 10 years as an investor like yourself. And then um, and my I've always been very fond of nickel. So I am probably one of the most active nickel junior mining CEOs out there in acquisitions and in, uh, in merchants acquisitions. However, I was around seven years early in the nickel scene before the advent of electric vehicles. Um, in, 28, in, 20, in 2019, the opportunity came about to acquire what I believe is the number one nickel project in Canada. And the opportunity opened up. Uh, I raised $11 million US dollars and we acquired the project in 2021. Uh, Fly Nickel then IPO'd in 2022 with a bang uh, as nickel went from $10 to $50 a pound in March of 2022. So that's how I got started. I'm the founder and CEO of Fly Nickel. Now we love nickel here. And like you mentioned, nickel is one of the key elements in electric vehicles. So we love metals and we love electric vehicles here at Rich TV Live. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of the Thompson Nickel Belt in Canada and how advanced is the flying nickel mining project? Thompson Nickel Belt is the second largest nickel camp in North America. It's actually ahead of Voices Bay, just behind Sudbury with 5 billion pounds of historical production. And which is it's very important to distinguish the difference between nickel sulfide versus nickel laterite, which is produced mainly in Philippines and Indonesia. These are notoriously uh, very polluted with coal fire power plants and require high pressurization of, of the uh, treatment of the uh, processing. And the tailings are dumped into the ocean with very heavy acids. So the, uh, the, the nickel produced in North America are a lot more environmentally friendly. Not, uh, do not require a high acid in its or high pressurization or high temperature in its processing method. Um, and uh, Minago is the name of the project. It's right in the middle or to the south of the Thompson Nickel Belt. It was discovered in the late 80s and over, over time had over 45 million or $50 million spent on it and over 86,000 meters of drilling. So this is one of the very few, wow. very advanced staged nickel project in Canada. Wow, sounds fantastic. And with 2023 just getting started, what are the top three things investors should keep an eye out for with flying nickel mining? Yeah, Rich, we talked about uh, other metals before, but I think for, for nickel, besides this, the fact that it's nickel sulfide, also that uh, Minago is uh, in one of the very few um, peer group that it, boasts, that it boasts a billion pounds of nickel in the ground. And a bit from the from from the eighty five thousand meter drilling, the grade is already today as of today is exceptional at zero point seven percent open pit, and uh, rich two thousand and five, uh, open pit nickel sulfide grades were about 0.7, so Minago is average, but because of the lack of exploration and discoveries in the nickel sulfide space, today's open pit nickel mine pet grades are zero point four, and. Uh, expert predict by in, by 2029, just six years from now, that grid is going to drop to 0 0.25. So that's going to make Minago, you know, from a, from from a very special group to an exceptionally rare group of having a, a open pit opt optimized project next to high highway, next to infrastructure with access to power and water readily available. So we envision capex to be under a billion dollars, and this will turn out to be one of the greenest and uh, one of the quickest to market uh, nickel project in Canada. Um, and uh, given Manitoba, where it's at, it's 99% hydropower. This project could potentially be one of the greenest um, nickel mines in the world. Rich? Wow, that's impressive. Well, now with 97 drill hole assay results coming for flying nickel, can you let investors know what 
that means and what they should be looking for in the results? I know. Uh, you know, the story just keeps getting better, even though the company is trading at one tenth of the IPO valuation and at a fraction of the investment that had gone into the project. Um, when we raised a $7 million uh, as a part of the IPO in early 2022, part of the mandate was to start a round of drilling, which we did. And we thought this is a nickel mine, but we drilled, we intercepted very good nickel grade, 7.7% to 1% over 50 to 100 meters. But we also discovered platinum palladium. So I was a little bit surprised. I said, wait a second, where is this coming from? There was never every reference in the technical report. And then we dig into the archive of the historical drilling. It turned out that only 20% of the past drill holes had been assayed for PGM. And the, the, the grades are very consistent and correlated very closely to the nickel grades. So you're looking at 0.5 grams to uh, one gram on average. But if you're looking at a deposit for 50 million tons, you're looking at you know, close to a million ounces from just back of the envelope analysis. So it's like, holy cow, if only 20, so what we should do is we should put everything aside and, and go back. So we spent two, three months analyzing, go back to the core shot. It's a very uh, convoluted, very, uh, it's a very long exercise, two, three months of, 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 of just digging in the core shack and modeling. So we've selected 97 drill holes out of around 250 to reassay for PGM with the objective of coming up with a PGM resource. And if so, I think that's gonna add a, a, not only more um, metal uh, value to the ground, uh, metal melt uh, enhance the value of the deposit in terms of metals contained in the ground, but more importantly, it's gonna enhance the economics of the deposit because that PGM is really gonna add additional layer of, 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 of uh, cash flow to the uh, future uh, operation of the mine. And not to mention additional appeal because PGM, as you know, these are out of catalyst additional angle for those people who are looking for uh, the green for for energy metals and looking for the green metals in the energy space. Rich, now John, we love understanding the share structure of a company. How many shares is there for flying nickel mining, and do you need to raise any money in the near future, or do you feel that you have enough cash on hand to be able to get the goals you want accomplished? For 2023, I just want to back. I just want to go back for a minute. The investor can 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 expect to receive continuous rolling PGM uh, results. 97 drill holes represent around um, 7,000 meters of drilling, so that's a lot of uh, assets to come out. So we're not going to be short of uh, news releases. We'd expect that the first one the assets to come up probably in the March timeframe and it be on a rolling basis until, and then and then at the conclusion of that drill program, the objective is to come up with a, uh, a of a PGM resource next to the nickel. Now the company IPO to raise, uh, I think it was $8.6 million. We have two strategic investors. Uh, one is uh, Blackstone Minerals and uh, they're from Australia. They're a nickel miner. And the other one is uh, from Germany. So we have very loyal institution support. Uh, we got, we got about just under a million dollar, and but however, we don't have any um, um, uh, uh, sort of uh, heavy expenditures outside of the assay drill program. Should the need uh, for us to raise money, uh, I I believe like we have a very loyal and uh, institution shareholders that we're able to finance us uh, till um, for the later part of the year. But right now, we are well capitalized for the uh, asset of the PGM uh, of the PG, of the PGM program. And how many shares is she outstanding right now? Right. We are, we are 62 million shares outstanding and, um, and um, you know, great share structure, institutions, insiders, management control. I think just over 40 percent of the project. So this, pro this share good. structure and, uh, and, and the shareholder support is as strong as you can get. And John, is there anything else you would want shareholders to know about flying nickel mining? Pick the right metal. If you are into base metal, energy metals, uh, nickel bar none is the best way to go. Um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of uncertainties in the market in terms of uh, growth of the economy. So I'm not as bullish on copper as as I once was, and um, and even uranium. It's going to cost you billions of dollars to build a plant. That's going to take about ten years. And when Elon Musk 2007 or 2018, 17, 18 said mine as much nickel responsibly, give, give you a big fat contract. 
and look at Tesla. It is now the number one luxury selling vehicle, passenger vehicle in the United States. And they've just dropped the pricing of their entire line of vehicles by up to 20% to, to continue the uh, federal credit. So now they're not only going after, uh, there's, they're now going to mass uh, market their, 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 their cars and to take the number one spot for overall passenger cars in North America, period, not just for luxury cars. And guess what will happen if, if Elon does that? Well, <laughs> the number of cars they sell is going to increase, so with the amount of nickel. And nickel, there's absolutely no question, I would be saying emphatically, that, that the, the, given the number in the last few years, nickel battery is being standardized as the high as the batteries technology for high standard performance batteries. How do we know that? Well, some of the world's largest auto and battery manufacturers are talking to us in order to supply their nickel, uh, nickel demand from 2027 to 2032. So that is a very strong indicator of that the technology is here to come. So if you wanna if you wanna if you wanna write the common denominator of of e, all the EV space, um, nickel is is the way to is the way to come. And I, I cannot think of a better complement to your existing precious metals portfolio. I love it and I love nickel. I want everyone to put their attention to flying nickel mining symbol in Canada, F L Y N, symbol in America, F L Y N F. I must remind you that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything we talk about or discuss. In saying that, I do believe this is a company that is undervalued, underappreciated, and underexposed. As John Lee mentioned, nickel is one of the key elements in electric vehicles, and there is literally a shortage of nickel needed for all the electric vehicles that this world wants and needs. We know that- Green nickel. Yes. Correct. We know that there's a mandate for 2030 to go fully electric in Canada. We know that China has the same mandate for 2030. I know that countries like Norway want to go fully electric by 2030. So in order for that to happen, nickel is going to be very, very much in need. So thank you so much for joining us today and explaining flying nickel mining. The CEO, John Lee. Thank you for joining us today, John. Rich, 60 million is just outstanding at 20 cents. It's exceptional value and I look forward to further update in due yes, course. Yes, we'd love to invite you back in the future. If you ever have any breaking news or anything you want to discuss, we'd love to have Rich TV Live be the place for you to come and talk to us about Flying Nickel Mining Corp. Now, thank you guys for watching. If you're not winning, you're probably not watching. We bring you the winners. We bring you the news, CEO interviews, and we bring them to you first. Thank you for watching, everybody. Rich from Rich TV Live with the CEO of Flying Nickel Mining, John Lee, saying have a nice day. We'll see you soon.